Welcome to this new how to. In this how to, we're going to look at the electronic flight pack from the Airbus A320 Neo version 2. So, the version 2 is developed by Ini Buildings and will be part of the next uh, sim update, which is sim update number 14, which will be released somewhere in December. Uh, currently, this one is only available if you're participating in the beta version of it. So, if you want to participate and want to try it, then you need to uh, join the beta and then you can enjoy this nice aircraft. Uh, but before jumping into the details, right, let's have a look at some of the things uh, which might have changed, although I don't, didn't spot any huge differences. Uh, first of all, we've got, we've got a wide livery of the Airbus. Uh, all the other liveries are the default ones, which also are available for the default A320. In weight and balance, there are not so many changes, right? You can uh, change the fuel, the payload, as well as the center of gravity. Uh, same thing as for the uh, failures. Not many new failures. I do think that it's still is the default failures which are on. Well, in this case, everything is off. And then, of course, we've got the customization where you can define multiple things like switching on the heavy to call sign, uh, show the tail number, and multiple other things. So that's really cool. So uh, let's go and jump to the uh, airport and let's have a look at the electronic flight pack. But since that requires some time to load, I will pause the recording and we will be back soon. And we're back. We're at the airport. As you can see, we're standing on uh, one of the parking spots uh, at Rotterdam the Hague Airport. Uh, and more aircrafts are popping up, as you can see. So this is the Airbus A320, right? So there are some nice announcements also on the outside. But as mentioned in, in the start of this video, we're going to look mainly at the electronic flight pack. So let's go inside the aircraft and have a look. So the electronic flight pack, as you can imagine, can be found on the uh, left side. But the good thing is that it also is available on the right side, as you can see, for the co-pilot. Uh, by default, the aircraft starts in uh, dark, right? So you don't have anything, you don't have any power, etc., which will make things complicated. But luckily, we can uh, simply enable that by simply enabling the uh, battery or by using uh, the ground power. Uh, the nice thing about this aircraft is that it has, I would say, a very detailed uh, checklist, which you can use, as you can see, right? I'm not going to go to all the things because I'd say that would simply make this video very lengthy, but I do recommend you to watch at the checklist and, of course, follow the steps over there because I do think that that makes more sense than simply clicking the buttons uh, like I'm going to do in this uh, video. So here I can see the batteries, right? Can switch on the batteries or switch them off and once you switch on the batteries you can also see that the uh, aircraft starts to uh, boot itself and all kind of other cool things so again what i mentioned right uh we're gonna look at the electronic flight back in this case we're gonna press continue because that's a, one of the bugs which i faced is that if you are i'd say hitting an issue uh that or starting the aircraft sometimes shows that you completed the flight already uh, which is kind of weird right so let me see why the electronic flight pad is not working. Oh, here it is. Took some time. Uh, and here you can see what it looks like. So for those who are, I would say, used to any buildings, they know that they are planning or creating, I would say, pretty cool uh, electronic flight bags with a lot of functionality. So uh, that also includes, for example, uh, setting the departure and arrival route. Although this will be pulled automatically if you plan the flight using the uh, world map in uh, Flight Simulator itself. Based on that, it will uh, get the uh, weather data, right? The meter data for both the departure and arrival uh, airport. And below, you can, let's say, put in any airport, right? So when clicking on it, uh, you can uh, enable it and then say, okay, hey, I want to, for example, know the weather in Amsterdam. Then you can put in the ICAO code and then it will give you back the uh, weather in Amsterdam. The other thing which you can do is import uh, data from Simbrief. And to do that, you need to make sure that you selected the option to use the A320 as the airframe, because else it will give you an error that it can't import the uh, Simbrief flight plan. So be aware of that. So I will do it uh, for now, so I can also show you the other videos. And here you can see what I meant, right? So in this case, I selected on purpose the incorrect one, and then you can see that you can't import it. So you need to make sure that you're selecting the correct flight, uh, let's say, uh, airframe, else you will get these kind of errors, right? 
So to fix that, I will need to update the uh, flight plan, which I will do, I'd say, as we speak. So I'm going to uh, simply flight plan and then make an adjustment there uh, to ensure that I'm using the correct one. It's always a challenge of uh, finding the correct one, right? Uh, in this case, it's the A320. I'm not showing it on the screen. I'm aware of that. Uh, so I'm going to generate it again, and hopefully this one will work because it's a little bit weird how it works, uh, to be honest. Uh, so it's because there are multiple A320s, right? So you need to make sure you're selecting the correct one. So let's wait for uh, the flight plan to be uh, generated. So that's done. Going back to Flight Simulator, right? And then let's give it another try. Now it says Simbrief plan loaded, which is cool because now if we go to the uh, OFP, which is the uh, flight plan, right? Let me I'll say increase the uh, brightness a bit. You can see that it has loaded the flight plan completely from Simbrief. And this gives us also the option to load the flight plan in, into the uh, uh, flight computer, right? The uh, FMC or the MCU. Uh, and then we can, I'd say, enjoy all the fun. So that's one of the integrations which you have. The second one is the ground one. And the ground one is also pretty extensive, right? You can open and close doors. Uh, you can see that everything is now closed. But if you would click it, it will say door in transit. And then once the door is opened, it will say door open and it will show it as a green marker. So it makes you aware in which stage the door is. The cool thing is that it also has some configs. So you can simply say a uh, loading config, which will open the door transit, uh, or sorry, the bulk open uh, the rear door at the front door, or you can close them all by clicking the close all option. And that will make sure that all the doors are closed to prevent that you need to click on each single door to close the door. Then we've got the cabin lights, right? So we can increase the uh, brightness of the cabin light uh, using this button. That's over here. And on the right side, you can see the equipment. So in this case, uh, the GPU is connected. Uh, you've got the toggle and the chocks, right? Which are the, the things which are uh, close to the wheels, right? To prevent that the aircraft uh, will start uh, driving. You can uh, toggle the catering. If you press toggle catering, you can see that automatically opens the door. Uh, and hopefully it will also I would say uh, get the catering truck as well as the luggage as well as the pushback so for the pushback there are some additional fun functions right so if you look at the bottom part there are some other additional options because you can control the pushback truck which is i would say a really nice thing because that's say using the atc right which is the default way is not always the option you want to use so that's from that that point Next one is the payload. And the payload, you can see that you can define the passenger weight, the cargo weight, and the fuel weight. And the cool thing is, if you want to have used Simbrief, you can simply import it, and then it will automatically assign the correct uh, packs uh, weight, the cargo, as well as the fuel. And the other option is to use the uh, zero fuel weight, right, by simply uh, using the, this option. Simply say, enter zero fuel weight, instead of, let's say, oh, let's say, I uh, say controlling these i would say sliders right uh that makes it also possible to define the uh, weight once you're happy with it you can select apply load and then you will get an option where it says do you want to apply it instant up to five minutes or, or realistic and then, then it will simply start loading the aircraft right so if i say fast up to five minutes you will see that numbers are will change here you can also see that the center of gravity will change uh, and i would say until the aircraft is fully loaded here you can see the remaining time. So in this case, it requires us well, little, less than one, one minute and 30 seconds to load the aircraft. And if there needs to be some additional fuel loaded, you can also see it here. Then we've got the panel state. And the panel state is simply in which state is the aircraft, right? We started with cold and dark, but you can also start with on GPU, on APU, or ready for takeoff depending on if you want to go manually to the checklist or want to do or, or let it do automatically by selecting one of these options over here. Uh, this one is the most realistic. And I would say the further you go down the list, the more, uh, I would say, uh, easy it will be between brackets, easy, right? Because it still can be a challenge flying this aircraft. Then we've got the takeoff data. And the takeoff data, again, you can press the sync option and then it will pull everything from Simbrief and then you can say, okay, hey, I want to calculate uh, the uh, weight 
But before doing that, you can see that the uh, that the weight is, needs to be defined. So I had some issues with that one. Uh, sometimes it's being synced, but sometimes also not being synced. In my case, I do think it has to do uh, with the uh, say payload, which is not say fully completed, right? Because you can see the uh, live cross weight is still let's say changing. So once you've done that, right? So let's wait for a few more seconds. I'm gonna try it again, and let's see if it syncs the data because that's critical uh, for you. Proceed. It says payload applied, right? We can say sync. We can say this one still doesn't work. That's kind of weird because I'm pretty sure that I had it working. Um, so let's enter the payload in that case manually, right? So let's enter, uh, what is it? Seven, nine, four, six, eight. So let's do that. Nine. Then we can change the flaps if the air conditioning is on, anti icing, and force uh, touch and go, uh, right? Or maximum mode. I don't know what it stands for touch and go, but I think someone mentioned to me a while ago that it's not touch and go. So if it's not correct, then uh, excuse me for it. Uh, provide me the correct name in the comment box below. Uh, besides that, you've got uh, the conditions, and the conditions are automatically pulled when pressing the sync button, right? So there's no need to do that. Uh, once you've done that, you can press the calculate option. If you're entering an incorrect value, just like just what I did, right? It will throw an error which says, okay, hey, you're entering unsafe data. So in this case, I'm going to go for, I would say, a little bit lower, right? So 6383. And then pressing the calculate options. And if I press the calculate options, it will automatically calculate the performance data, right? So the flex, but also the V1, the V rotate, and the V2, as well as the uh, curve settings, center of gravity, and the THS, which I think stands for throttles something, but I'm not 100% sure about that. So if you know what THS stands for, then let me know. And you can see that, let's say, based on this, it draws, although it's a little bit hard to see, it draws a line of how or how it. It could be seen when you take off from the runway. So in this case, uh, this is the uh, limitations is the runway length, uh, which is the limitation. So then we'll apply this and show you, okay, hey, this is what you can expect. So this is simply a warning message. It's not that it won't take off. It will still be able to do it. I think it, there's a relation between uh, what you put in here uh, compared to what you put in here. And then it will tell you, okay, hey, this is what you need to do to make sure that you can take off. Then you can send it to the FMGS, and then it gives you a green mark, right? So that sends it to the flight computer. Now, last but not least, there's the options menu. And the options menu simply includes the SimBrief username, as well as the tail number and cell call. You can define the units, right? Do you want it to be metrics or imperial? And also the IRS alignment time. The IRS alignment time uh, is by default set to real, uh, which will take you several minutes before it's ready uh, for usage. But if you set it to instant, then it will directly go uh, quickly. If you set it to fast, then it's less than five minutes. Link instruments. You can link the instruments, or which is by default set to no. You can also link them uh, to the captain and the flight of, uh, first officer or the first officer and ISIS, which I think is the engineer in the aircraft, but I'm not I'm sure about that one uh, either. What a control stiller, yes or no, uh, auto tiller disconnect, right? That's if you want to disconnect uh, the auto tiller automatically and use the zero fuel weight entry. Uh, it's set by default to no, which means yes, you've got those sliders, but you can also switch it to yes. Uh, that's uh, if you set it to yes, then you need to enter the zero fuel weight, right? Makes sense. Then the default throttle reduction, uh, acceleration alt is a 1500 AL. You can also set to 1000. And you can also say reset the brake temperature, right? So the brake temperature you can heavily uh, brake, and then it will let's say increase the temperature of the brakes, of course. And if it's too high, then you can uh, use the fan to cool them down. But if you don't want to wait, you can click this button. Other than that, uh, and the last one, I would say the last one. Other than the default options to control the aircraft, we have this one, which is really important, which is uh, showing the throttle calibration. And if you've got those nice throttles, right, uh, either from Turtle Beach or from one of the other vendors, then make sure that you're controlling the axis or calibrating the axis here using this menu. 
So I tried it several times and it works pretty easy, right? You choose if you want to use reverse on the axis and then simply say confirm calibration. And then you start the calibration process. Keep in mind that uh, don't only look at this part of the screen, but also look behind you, right? Where the, I would say, throttle is and make sure that it's in the correct position. Make sure that the uh, calibration uh, is done correctly. I tested it and to be honest, it worked, I would say, perfect for me. Um, the good thing is that if you did this, then you're taking to all the steps. But if you want to change one of those, I would say individual steps, right? For example, you want to change the flex MCT and simply put the throttle in that position and then press this option, which will only change that specific, uh, I would say, position and not the rest. So this, I, I would say this ends the video, right? So we went to all the options which are over here. Uh, so I would say, I'm pretty impressed by what you, what they have implemented as this, as this is the initial version, right? It's based on the A310 as far as I understood, but a really nice electronic flyback with some very useful features, uh, which you can use when uh, playing Flight Simulator 2020 with the A320 V2. Again, here ends this video. I hope you liked it. If you liked it, then consider to use the like button. If you've got questions or comments, then feel free to post them in the comment box below. And if you want to stay up to date about new videos I'm posting, then make sure that you're subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.